Brutal Wolfenstein 3D is the latest old school shooting game that someone has thrown the word brutal at the start of and had the violence and carnage ramp right up to the nth degree. This one's been developed by a guy called Zio McCall and the way it's been thrown together is a little bit weird. It's not a modification of the original Wolfenstein 3D running on the old engine, it's actually the entire game remade I guess into the Doom engine, which then needs to be run with a source port like Z-Doom. So while I sit here trying to muster up the courage to eventually do a review for Hentai Doom, let's take a look at this mod in the meantime, shall we? In the mod, you're still playing as BJ Blazkowicz and going through Castle Wolfenstein, shooting dogs, SS officers and all that kind of stuff. But now you wield a bunch of new weapons and kill the Nazis so lavishly that every surface of a room will be decorated in a nice looking arterial red. Any Sunny Jim who's played Brutal Doom will kinda know what to expect, but in case you don't, the whole point of the mod is to really overdo the violence and add in a bunch of new weapons and enemy types to make the original game more action packed. And it truly does accomplish this and then some. There's a new HUD which resembles the original HUD from Wolfenstein 3D, but I preferred to use the alternate HUD in Z-Doom, which showed what ammunition I had for all my weapons all the time. Also, I kind of found the new heads-up display to be a little bit clunky. The original weapons return, you've got the knife, the pistol, the MP40, and the chain gun, though now they've all been updated visually and in terms of how they function. There's also an MP44, an M1 Garand, a Colt 1911, a Thompson machine gun, and a Car 98. All of the weapons need to be reloaded, and while the damage between them is up and down, they're all pretty effective at headshots, which will kill most enemies with a single hit, turning their head into a geyser of blood at the same time. There's a couple more extravagant weapons you get in the later episodes, like a bazooka and the flamethrower. Most of the weapons are fun to play around with, though I think the MP44 is by far the best of the bunch. It's accurate, it does great damage, and ammo is plentiful. The chain gun is now modelled off an MG42 and the recoil is horrendous making it difficult to use. The MP40 is decent too but the spray for it is all over the place making it less effective from a distance. The Car 98 is useful as well though obviously you've got to pull back the bolt between each shot and I also think it's cool how the Nazis use this thing as well. I had a bit of fun with the M1 Garin though ammo for this thing can be hard to come by which is a bit of a shame. The Thompson machine gun is pretty devastating, but ammo is even more limited for it, which makes sense as there's no reason you'd find 45 ammo in a Nazi base when they primarily use 19mm for their MP40s. You can also throw a quick grenade to clear out a cluster of bad guys, which looks and sounds pretty cool. And this is probably the rarest ammunition type of all. Sadly, the flamethrower is a bit of a mixed bag. You don't get it until the third episode, and at this point it drops from flamethrower soldiers, who I guess are like influenced from the Venom soldiers in return to Castle Wolfenstein. Now, the flamethrower is decent against normal enemies, but when these guys are lit on fire, they run around screaming, and in this state they're able to damage the player. Also, there's like a second or two delay before they're ignited, which is like a second or two they're able to keep firing. Against the flamethrower soldiers, the flamethrower is pretty much ineffective, and as they're often thrown in with the groups of the other normal soldiers, it's easier to just use a different weapon entirely, than to switch back and forth between the flamethrower for the different enemy types. Enemies are able to use all of the weapons the player has access to, which really makes the whole thing pretty damn challenging. I mean, you will die a lot. The death animations for the player are pretty gruesome, but that works both ways as well. Sometimes the basic Nazi soldiers will get on their knees and beg for their life, allowing you to execute them for some bonus health points. There's no armor pickups in this mod, so all you've got is a measly 100 health points to keep you on your feet. Medkits are pretty common, but the power-ups that take your health above 100 are hard to come by, and as a result, you can die really quickly. The enemies don't have all that much health points, but they're just fast and accurate and in absolute abundance. So going for headshots is pretty much essential as you'll be running out of ammo a fair bit if you just keep yourself leaned on the left mouse button. In fact, it's almost kind of funny how the game is a little bit tactical in a sense where you've really got to creep around corners and take enemies out one at a time before they all heap up on you. You can often just funnel a group of bad guys into a single doorway and take them out one at a time, which is a lot safer than running into a room firing away like a jackass. Boss fights, on the other hand, are total horse shit. The enemies just have insanely high health points, which I guess isn't saying much as they kind of did in the original Wolfenstein. Against these guys, it becomes a matter of exploiting them around walls and firing on their gigantic hitboxes before they're able to fire back. Overall though, it's the right combination of challenge with a bit of cheapness here and there, but most of the time it's a genuinely difficult game and not too frustrating. 
I'm often having too much fun blowing a Nazi's head off to really get upset with anything anyway. I've got to say too, I really give Zeo credit for going through and recreating the entire game into the Doom Engine. There's something just really kinda cool about seeing the game running in the Doom Engine. And with the smooth controls of a source port like Z Doom, it's really easy to play. It's like Grease Lightning. I don't know how accurate it is in terms of the size of the maps and all that, but I sure did get a sense of deja vu as I was playing through it and could instinctively remember where to go to find the keys which I needed to finish the floors. There are a few areas that could use a few more light sources as it just seems a bit too dark for no real good reason and I'm not too fond of some of the redesigned bosses which I really think should have been left closer to their original appearance but overall it's a pretty fun mod. Of course the biggest problem Wolfenstein 3D had was the literal maze like level design where it was quite easy to get lost and lose your way. Being something of a carbon copy, Brutal Wolfenstein 3D does suffer from this problem but it's alleviated by the fact that you've now got an auto map, which means you can clearly see where you are and where you need to go. Brutal Wolfenstein 3D is everything you'd want from a mod with Brutal at the start of it. It's violent, loud, challenging, hilarious, violent, enjoyable, violent and loud. Yeah, I said violence and loud more than once on purpose. The mod is still in development, but even in this current state, it's a lot of fun and is definitely worth checking out.